How's it going guys? We're back at the shop, Northtown Machine. Uh, last time you saw us, uh, Rich and I were working on uh, the short block, getting it all built up, doing all the rods, installing the pistons, rings, everything. I'm sure you watched that video. So now the next part of that is working on the head. We're gonna disassemble the head, pressure test it, hot tank it, clean it. Uh, chances are the tubes are gonna be leaking, so we're gonna change out tubes, doing all the guides valve job, resurface, get this head completely ready. And then once all the work on this head is all done, we're gonna call Rich back and we're gonna install the head, put the rocker arm assembly together, probably install injectors and pump. <laughs> We're gonna chamfer in the oil galleries in the crank, installing cap and rings, and put as many pistons as we can before what you have to go in what? I don't know. 10 minutes? <laughs> yeah. Scott's done all the machining on the head, and today we are finally gonna bolt the top half of our CAT engine to the bottom half, close it in, and take it home. So this is how it'll be for the next little bit. head is all prepped for guide installation now. We use these to set the gauge and height of the guide from when it came from factory. And I'm gonna use air tool, that, and this. After the guide installation, I put the valves back into it, old, old valves, not cut. seat still the original seat from the old valve and I'm measuring the depth of the recession to the head and the valve to see where my heights are. Set up the cat head, I'm just getting ready to dial indicate it and have it all anchored down. So I'm gonna set the dial indicator, make sure it's all flat, and then resurface it. Final stages of uh, head assembly, just shoving the valves in the uh, guides, test valve recession and the length before the stem sits against the head, right over here. So when the head is freshly decked and I cut the seats down, you got to measure the recession between the surface of the head and the surface of the valve and it can't exceed the numbers that I have set on the head here, so intake. 42 thou to 67 thou, and exhaust, same thing, 43 thou and 67 thou.
so exciting day. Scott's done all the machining on the head and today we are finally gonna bolt the top half of our cat engine to the bottom half, close it in and take it home. Morning Scott. Morning, how's it going? Good. Uh, wrong head buddy. No, no, I uh, fortunately in the hot tank, it shrank. <laughs> so we're gonna modify. Everybody wants to see a 350 Chevy and everything. So we're gonna put two 350 heads. Nice. Oh, nice cat. Right, gonna share a couple cylinders. Yeah, and, yeah it's weird head flow. gasket. Nice. It'll flow like crazy. Yeah, I think you're as excited to get this engine out of here as we are to take it home. So, oh, it's, uh, I love this engine. <laughs> I dream about that's it. Why, that's why you've kept it for a year. Yep. <laughs> yeah. On top of that, we got new injectors, new Huey pump, yep. and new turbo. New turbo, brand new turbo. Nice. Yep. So. We should have no issues. So kind of what I want to do is put it together, put it on a stand and actually get it running on the stand and then start running all my wiring into my gauges, like just mount the dashboard roughly and then, and then get it running before we tear into the truck too much. So yeah, so it should be in the truck soon then, eh? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what are we doing? The machining's done, we just gotta clean everything. Yep. Yep. All right, we'll just start off by, uh, I use a paint gun thinner. Yep. So basically I'm just gonna do a lightly, lightly spray, put it on the rag a little bit, wipe it down. We have a little bit of storage oil and stuff on it. Storage oil? Yeah. That's cause you had it for, no. <laughs> it's been here for a little bit. Sometimes it happens. We're working out a deal or whatever. It works good for you because you've always got an engine to work on when it's slow. Yep. And what that means is we get pushed back a little bit, but a little in all bit. honesty, I wasn't ready to put this in anyway. Yeah. Because we're trying to finish up the Audi and the GTO and the seat pan, so. But I'm gonna give you guys a pro tip. Whenever you get work done by anybody, never say, I'm not in a rush. Yep. What that means is, <laughs> can you store my engine for me? Yeah. It, doesn't get, <laughs> it doesn't get done until you're, it you matter. need it. I just go over with my hand. I still feel that my hand is the best way to feel if there's any contaminants. Picks up lint. The oil is on your bare hand. We'll pick up anything. We've had two engines, so I gave you a complete engine with all the nuts and bolts on it, but I took one engine apart and I have everything bagged, except they all leaked in oil. So every, <laughs> every Ziploc is like soaked in oil. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. No, eh? No. <laughs> so we got our dowels now. never seen this before. I actually traded a guy a set of water skis for this and it was only appropriate that, you know, all of a sudden I couldn't wear my cat hat today because I'm like, oh, I got a cat torque wrench, a cat engine, a cat. It's like a, it's like a $600 torque wrench. <laughs> it's like Snap-on. Yeah. Everybody hates my Mastercraft stuff. I don't know, calibration is calibration, isn't it? <laughs> I like to sit here watching you in here. <laughs> but seeing that we don't have an impact on it, you should be okay. <laughs> it looks like you're concentrating, so yeah, I already messed up. I'm really out of shape. <laughs> 305? It says 305 and 
That's pretty pretty broad range. Yeah. A bunch of engineers in a room. How much do you think the torque should be? <laughs> Typically, on most builds, I have I get the convenience to be able to allow the engine to sit for a while. Yep. I typically try to factor into my build times, and it might sound funny, but I actually just leave alone now. And I try to allow at least a day, and I'll come back okay. and retorque all the head bolts. Oh, okay. A lot of people might not agree with that, but some situations call for the bolts to be backed off and retorqued and stuff. I don't like doing those methods. Yeah. I'll just let this sit now yep. and relax and the stresses and stuff, because it's pulling right. up, especially on a torque like that. Some people might relate that to using torque plates on a on a build, right? Right, right. They torque the plates up on the block, that distorts the block, and then they hone and bore to that, right? Right. But, Does the book call for a hot torque or no? Uh, no, I like to tell all my customers to always retorque the head bolts when they have a situation they can. Some customers follow it, some customers don't. Right. What we did is we replaced the tubes. Uh, basically, we press test the head, and there we noticed that there was a couple of leaky tubes. So what that means is that the seal between the tube and the cast was allowing a little bit of coolant to come through to the uh, the combustion side of the head. Um, so what that means, once that starts to happen, we remove all the tubes, clean, and put new new tubes. And these tubes have to be stainless steel. You want to take half? Just use your clip all in my head. Yep. This is just cam lube. Yeah. So it's under for high pressures and stuff. It's probably overkill for what these are, but just put it on any mating surface. This is where it gets fun. Yeah. Craft impacts and snap on screwdrivers. I think you got priorities wrong. The best of both worlds. <laughs> <laughs> We're just making sure that the push rods are sitting in the roller or the cam followers. Where the bottom of the push rods are sitting in the there you go. You gotta have the knob in there. So you can you can draw it down tighter. Yep. We want the arms to sit in the rods, but we don't want a massive amount of tension on it because you you can bend the rocker shaft assembly. You back them all off before you take them apart. Don't crank them down before you tighten all these ones. It's a pain though because some of the push rods pop out once in a while, so you just gotta double and triple check that. This rocker amp shaft is 70 foot pounds. That's a lot. Yeah? Yeah, it's a three quarter inch or it's a half inch bolt. So they're pretty well seated down. Just double check those are in the cups one more time. Yeah. I'll let you do the honor. All right. <laughs> I'll hold it for you. You know you're paying too much for engines when the uh, bolts have their own name branding. Oh, you're not using a cat bolt. So 
So single is exhaust. Yep. Dual intake. We'll start with the exhaust. So 25 thou for clearance on exhaust and 15 on intake. We have a whole video on how to set valve lash and why, so we won't get into it. Okay, so the injectors, uh, as Scott, you've seen in the video, he replaced the cups, and that's, that's important only because the injectors through here actually get oil pressure from the engine, and that's what actually fires the injector by a signal on, on the top. So well, most of the tubes on tubes when we do, they're coolant in the head too, right? Yeah. So the tube will sit right here, Yep. and that seals off coolant getting into the injector, and then that's the passageway for the oil is still in the head, but cast in the head. And that seals up between here and here. Oh, okay. So these are the new injectors that match our bigger turbo so we can get it reflashed and hit our 300 horse, 800 torque. And I didn't know anything about the injectors, just that I could barely get that engine running. So I imagine the old Huey pump was okay, but uh, a bunch of the injectors were shot. And number three and four cylinders on the other block were worn right down. Okay. So like you could almost cut yourself on the ring ridge. Yeah, yeah. So either injectors were fuel. blowing the fuel through or no air filter and all the sand and crap that they were, that was going through uh, just wore the Ward, okay. right down, yeah. So yep. awesome, we'll throw yep, these in. Oh, remanufactured in the good old USA. <laughs> Why couldn't you get them done in Canada, Scott? It was supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> nice, let's throw these in, torque them down, okay. and go from there. Double and triple check that there's no washer at the bottom of that. Check the old videos and seems kind of odd, but. Scott, you wanna do this? How hard do you hit it and how big of a hammer do you use? What does the book say? <laughs> <laughs> Try tapping. Oh yeah, I know it went down a little bit. If you yeah. look at the silver ring. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's it. Okay, make sure we can get the bolts in and then keep going. I took a nice slice in the tip of my thumb yesterday, dropping off some scrap at VNR, and that really hurts when you're putting little <laughs> finite bolts in there. Bash the injectors in with a hammer. So I just grab the impact and buzz these down? Or? Yep. Okay. Those little four mil screws. <laughs> Half inch gun or the three? Three. Eights. Don't want to overkill or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My elbow has a really soft click at like 15 pounds. You ready? <laughs> Tendonitis. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Is it arthritis or tendonitis? A little or? bit of both. <laughs> yeah. So these, you draw them down tight, evenly, just with a little T Allen, and then it's 120 inch pounds. And that's a real, give a long ground. Yeah. How can you feel? It feels tight. <laughs> <laughs> My professional yeah, engine builder. Feel tight. That should be good. It's got good compression. <laughs> little, just a little more. And pu uh, push back there. Uh, Rich, I think that you might be missing something. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> 
You just decided to wait till now to show me? <laughs> See how long it took you. <laughs> there you go. Oh, you little. Oh, man. I was just about to throw something. That was good. That made me laugh. Never do it again. <laughs> So there's a little bigger gap here, so that's probably where you start and you stop. So you got some silicone there. It's so you can overlap, actually. You don't butt, you overlap. I'm assuming, I don't know, I didn't read the book. Silicone in there, but we'll make sure that this is the way it's supposed to go first. No surprises. You know, there's compression in there. It doesn't turn while torquing. Or, or is this the solid? What's the torque on the lower valve cover? I'm guessing 29 inch pounds. 120? Wow, I was off by a lot. So we're just putting this one on temporary. We're getting new stickers made. Um, we'll paint it and then we kind of want to have the top black. So we'll paint it first, then we'll put the stickers on it. Make it look all brand spanking new. And that's kind of the finishing touch though. So make sure we got all the bolts. Yeah, just put popping the cam pickup sensors in now. So Rich does not to do it later. Then I'll throw the front cover on. So we should be good to go. Oh, this is it's always good times. Driving, driving down the road to cover up your turbo or if you're hauling equipment to cover up your exhaust because the wind will hit the turbine and it'll spin all day 
with no uh, no oil in it, and then you've got a garbage turbo. I know some, it doesn't uh, take much. Some of my customers leave their machines running yeah. while they're driving to different jobs and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, at first, I didn't fully understand until I had got an engine that came in that blew up because the turbo spun while they're driving. So something leaked in my bin there and washed all my Sharpie off my little Ziploc bag. Generally, I can remember stuff that happened like a month, year, two yeah. months ago, a full year. That gets tricky. So we're basically dry fitting a bunch of stuff. Um, and uh, making sure we have everything. We are gonna get rid of, of the fuel filter that was here um, and build a better intake and then put the fuel system down below. But just for travel purposes and stuff, we wanna cover up all the ports, one less chance to get any dirt or anything in. And then uh, once we get it home, we'll make sure that we have everything where we want it and then paint it and fire it up on a stain. Just temporary, we gotta fill that filter up before we start cranking. It's nice warm outside, so I figured I'd roll this thing outside and splash some paint on it. I'm gonna paint the valve covers black, get new stickers made for the proper uh, identification numbers. And I see I have to tape off my cam sensors and my dipstick yet. And then we should be able to splash some paint on it. Um, we tried Rust-Oleum, the spray paint, but it's a little bright. It's the new color, I think. We want the older stuff to keep it uh, proper. That matches the oil filter. We got some of this stuff, which sprays really difficult, actually. There's the number, and it's the PPG stuff. So we'll mix that five to one to one, maybe a little bit thinner, and then we'll try spraying it. If it doesn't work, I'll uh, brush it on. But move the tractor and the stuff out of the way that I don't want yellow paint on. So here's a nice life hack for you. If too cheap to buy mixing containers, just take something that's round and even all the way through and mark out five inches, one inch, and one inch. And there you've got your five to one to one ratio. And then uh, these spray guns, they're like 25 bucks at Princess Auto. So you don't even have to clean them. You just throw them away after each use. I, I generally clean them once and then use them to prime the next job and then throw it away. So kind of a two use thing. Cleaning involves running a little bit of reducer through their paint gun cleaner. But yeah, uh, they work extremely well for what what you pay for anyway we'll mix that up and uh here we go
I got this neat stand from uh, VNR, which allows me to support the 1200 pound engine with a nice sweater on top while I'm painting the valve covers and mount the transmission at the back. And I don't think this stand was originally meant for this engine um, because I had to take these out of these holders and uh, put them right here because that's where it went. It didn't fit there to catch my ears. So I've got these nice little holders here. I figure I might as well weld the pipe to the dash and mount the dashboard right here. And then uh, I can see what it looks like with all the wiring and start to figure that out. As I'm wiring up the engine, I can wire up the dash and the gauges at the same time. So, here we go. Can't even really describe how heavy and awkward this stupid thing is. <laughs> it's bad. I mean, this thing weighs 100 pounds, 100. 20 pounds or more? Oh, jump. And there it is. We got a dash, working vents, roughly in the spot of where it will sit in the truck. Um, just very roughly basing it off my truck where the top of the dash is about a foot higher than here. We can go up a bit. What we'll do is we'll run the wires, we'll make it go in such a way that we can move it over one way or another. But now to wire it and to work on the dash in the back to try and get the HVAC unit uh, working and figured out is much, much nicer than uh, climbing in and out of the truck constantly and takes up a lot less space too. Almost want to go to Tuesley and just take a giant quick cut and cut out the firewall that I can slip over and in and out on the same style truck. I think he's got a rusted one there. What we could do is then is, is modify it to uh, fit the profile of the, the dashboard um, and the windshield. So this is how it'll be for the next little bit until we start wiring it, which is coming up next. Here we go.